everybody, my name is MacArthur, bewildered bard, befuddled broadcaster, benevolent buffoon, and your host for yet another episode of Inner Peace for Nerds. Today I want to talk a little bit about forgiveness. If you've been alive long enough, chances are that you've been hurt, betrayed, or screwed over by somebody in one way or another. If so, you also know that when this happens, it can be pretty difficult to forgive these people. We know that we should forgive them, or at least we're told for our entire lives that we should, by everyone from our parents to Buddha to Jesus. But for those of us who aren't saints or enlightened masters, there are times when this seems a little unrealistic. But why exactly is that the case? If there are enough parables and famous quotes out there about forgiveness that you can barely mention the word without sounding cliché, there must be something to it. So why does it seem so difficult for so many of us? Well, the answer might be more simple than we think. In order for us to hold a grudge or to resent somebody for a choice that they've made in the past, we must first believe that they knew better, or at least that they should have known better. In other words, we must first believe that they had a choice. Now, at first glance, that might sound pretty reasonable and maybe even self-evident. But unfortunately, for the part within all of us that loves to feel resentment towards others and loves to feel victimized, it turns out that that assumption might not be so accurate after all. And as usual, a metaphor can illustrate this point fairly well. Take a small child, for example. You might tell your two-year-old son a dozen times not to touch a hot stove, but chances are, he probably will still do it at least once. When he does, you might scold him and say, it serves you right, you knew better. At which point he might stare at you with a bewildered expression. Perhaps that's because, on some intuitive level, he can sense that the statement you just made has some problems in the logic department. You see, if your child just touched a hot stove, he obviously didn't know better because, well, he just touched a hot stove. He might have suspected better, he may have speculated and theorized that he would be burned. He might even trust his mother's repeated warnings and maybe even obey them 90% of the time. But in this case, he obviously wasn't sure enough about being burned to resist doing it. Knowing is something far different from speculation, vague moral instincts, intellectual principles, or even faith for that matter. You only know something when it is so self-evident, so obvious and clear that no thought or hesitation is required to put it into practice. At some point, it becomes almost something you feel rather than something you think. Whether you're dealing with a cheating spouse, an abusive family member, or a misbehaving child, careful observation will eventually lead to the rather unsatisfying conclusion that a person cannot know better and commit an evil act at the same time. Sure, they might appear to know better for their entire lives up to that point, but apparently, for whatever reason, they needed a little more proof before making up their minds for good. And maybe that's not such a bad thing. After all, there are times in life when we all need to suffer the consequences of an action before we can truly be certain of its futility times when a certain amount of personal experience is necessary for true knowing, regardless of what everything and everyone else might be telling you at the time. Now, this is precisely how personal confidence is built, and learning would be very difficult without the ability to fail, even if those failures happen to hurt ourselves or those we love. This is also how forgiveness can become an easy and natural choice instead of a struggle. By accepting this reality, it becomes clear that we all learn different lessons at different times in our lives depending on our interests, our talents, and opportunities, and there's nothing that says we have to learn these lessons in any specific order. In fact, how could it be otherwise? You wouldn't call Einstein stupid if he never learned to swim any more than you would call an Olympic swimmer stupid for not getting a PhD in physics. The fact is that life is way too big to learn it all in a thousand lifetimes, let alone a few years. 
So the next time you find yourself holding a grudge, harboring resentment, or struggling with forgiveness, just picture the offending party as a... No, f*** that. Nobody really likes toddlers. How about... How about picture them as puppies? Sweet, adorable little puppies. Yeah, this works way better. I should have started with the puppy thing. So, check this out. If you were playing with a two-week-old puppy and it bit you, you certainly wouldn't freak out and throw it out the window or punt it across the room. Nor would you block the puppy on Twitter or spend five bitter years talking shit about him to your friends and losing sleep over his awful deeds. That would be ridiculous. It's just a little puppy who obviously didn't know any better. With some puppies, the only way for them to learn not to bite people is to actually do it so they can get in trouble and experience all the pain and unpleasant drama that ensues. Perhaps that's because there are some cases in both human and puppy lives where it's simply not enough to be told that we shouldn't do something. Sometimes we have to learn why we shouldn't do something. And for that particular lesson, nothing beats personal experience. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode of Inner Peace for Nerds. My name is MacArthur, and if you dig this or any of the other content that we post on this channel, let us know in the comments section below, and remember to hit that subscribe button. Until next time, go easy on the puppies, because before long you may find yourself in need of forgiveness for peeing on the carpet, or eating a shoe, or chasing a cat.